Welcome to Touching the Ozarks, the weekly television broadcast ministry of Ozark Full Gospel Church, featuring the Bible teaching of Pastor James Akins. Thank you for joining us and stay tuned as we get ready to hear another message from God's exciting word. Jesus said, when I die for the world, I'm going to the tomb and I'm going to get up from the grave and I'm going to offer salvation to the whole world. And I want you to know for the Christian, the best is yet to come. At Ozark Full Gospel Church, we have three exciting services every week. Our service times are Sunday morning at 10.30, Sunday night at 6 p.m., and Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. There is meaningful praise and worship and powerful Bible preaching at every service, and we never close for any reason. In addition, be sure to follow us on social media to stay up to date with all of our upcoming events and most current information. We look forward to seeing you soon, right here where we are touching the Ozarks with Jesus Christ. This is Brother Akins, and I have an exciting announcement to make. We are going to start a revival in Galena, Missouri. Actually, the Lord's going to start one on June the 4th on Sunday morning at 1030 and Sunday night at 6 o'clock. We'll continue through the week at 7 o'clock nightly for an old-fashioned revival. I want to introduce you to a good friend of mine who pastors in Galena, Missouri, Jimmy Harris. Thank you, Brother Akins. Yeah, we're going to be having this big to-do down at Galena First Baptist Church. Brother Akins is coming. We're going to have music. We're going to have testimonies. We're going to have preaching. We're going to have the exposition of the Word of God. It's going to be wonderful. And we're going to let the Holy Ghost guide these meetings. It's going to just be a great time in the Lord. Amen. I look forward to being with you, Jimmy, and we want to invite everybody else to come and be with us. It's easy to find Galena, Missouri. It's small, but it's got a nice, beautiful church there on the square, and we want to invite you to come and be with us. Jimmy, we're excited about going there, excited about working with you in this meeting. Thank you, sir. I'm excited, too. Y'all come see us. God bless you guys. Amen. What a joy it is to just get together and open up God's Word and take it and run with it, amen, and run as far as you can with the Word of God because we're going someplace. We're going to arrive very soon into the presence of the Lord, and I'm awaiting His coming. How about you? Praise God. We are in the 10th chapter of St. John, and uh, I'd like for you to stand for the reading of God's Word. Now, we're going to read the first 10 verses, and um, I want you to bear in mind that the ninth chapter is, uh, chapter 10 is a continuation of the ninth chapter. Actually, the things that Jesus Christ says in the first 10 verses are connected to the blind man that was healed in John chapter 9 that the Jewish scribes and the Pharisees kicked him out of church. And Jesus comes in with a little fire and talks to them about being the true shepherd. And Jesus Christ, of course, is our true shepherd. Verse 1 through 10. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth and... The sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will not they follow, but will flee from him, for they know that know not the voice of strangers. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he had spoke unto them. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not but for to steal 
kill, and destroy. I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. I want to use for a subject this morning, sheep in the courtroom. You may be seated. Sheep in the courtroom. As I said before, chapter 10 is a continuation of chapter 9. Jesus Christ is correcting those that thought they had everything cornered up in the area of religion. And he's showing them that he had sheep that was not of that fold. And that he had the power by being the good shepherd to lead sheep where they needed to go. Amen. How many know if you follow Jesus, he's going to take you to good places. Amen. If you follow Jesus, he's going to take you to eternal life. If you follow Jesus, you're going to be blessed. But if you follow yourself, you're going to be confused. And if you follow the devil, you're going to die and burn in hell. I'm trying to be real sensitive right now. I want to point out that the first five verses of chapter 10 is talking about, actually there's two sheep folds here. There's two Sheep pens. I use the phrase pen, but it's sheep fold. And there are two sheep folds uh, here through verse 1 through 10. And verse 1 through 5 is the first sheep fold, and it is the village sheep pen. In other words, it is a place where the shepherds would bring their sheep and leave them overnight in a sheep fold. And the shepherd would go get a good night's rest. The porter would protect. The sheepfold would hold them. And then the shepherd would come back the next morning and call his sheep out of the sheepfold. In all your main villages, your, your towns, they had what was called a sheepfold. Or actually, we could call it a sheep pen. And that's where all the shepherds brought their sheep and left them until the next morning. And so the first five verses is talking about that. But the verse 6 through 10, the next five verses actually, is talking about the sheepfold that's outside the city limits or is in the countryside. So you have first the sheepfold in the village, and next you have the sheepfold in the country or outside the, the village in the country um, wilderness. Now, I, I want to just begin by saying that because every village had a sheepfold, there was someone that took care of the sheepfold. He was called the porter. The porter was the one that checked in the sheep as they came into the sheepfold. That's the, the first sheepfold we're looking at. And so uh, it's very interesting that the porter would inspect them. He would take time to inspect them as they pass through, and we'll, we'll pick that up a little bit later on, but the porter would take his rod, he would, he would look at them, he'd take the rod, and he'd poke at them, he'd look at their ears, he'd look at them, make sure they didn't have no running sores, make sure they weren't sick, so, because he didn't want any sheep to go in to disease the rest of the flock the rest of the flock. So he would inspect the sheep, and not only would he inspect the sheep for disease or being crippled or whatever, he would inspect the sheep, and then he would inspect the shepherd. So he could connect the shepherd with the sheep because the porter didn't have the, you know, the inside. Sheep uh, in that day were not, you know, they weren't tagged on their ear. They weren't branded on, the, on their rear. They weren't, uh, they weren't tattooed. They weren't cut a certain way. Uh, they weren't branded in a certain way. They were just sheep. And if you know anything about sheep, they look a lot like sheep. And sheep look a lot like other sheep. And sheep, sheep here, and the sheep, sheep there, and everywhere, sheep, sheep, sheep. And so the porter had to depend on the articulation and the strength of the shepherd. And so Jesus Christ says, that he is the good shepherd. He comes and as he brings his sheep into the sheepfold, the porter examines. Now, the porter actually, he works the, the night shift. I hate working the night shift, but the porter worked the night shift so the shepherds could go get a good, good night's rest. 
And we'll bring that up a little bit later on. But I, I want to say something about the rod and the inspection because the truth is this porter made an inspection. He, he got familiar with the situation. And um, how many know that we're all under inspection? You say, oh, bless God, I'm not. Yeah, you are. I'm inspecting you right now. You don't know it, but your mother-in-law's inspecting you. You don't know it, but your father-in-law's is inspecting you if they're living. You don't know it, but your neighbor's inspecting you. You don't know it, but your wife or husband is inspecting you. Your children are inspecting you. And we're inspecting each other. Just call us Mr. Inspector. Now, I didn't say we were judges, but we do inspect. God says there's coming a time in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 20, verse 37 and 38, he said, and I will cause you to pass under my rod, and I will bring you into, into the bond of the covenant. I will purge out from among you the rebels and them that transgress against me. I will bring them forth out of the country where they sojourn, and they shall not enter into the land of Israel. Ye shall know that I am the Lord. And so God is saying through the prophet Ezekiel that he would inspect and make all the sheep come under his rod. I'm glad that I have traveled under his rod. I'm glad that the porter has looked at me and said, that guy's different. Aren't you glad that you're different from the world? Hello? If you're not different from the world, we need to talk to you up here at the altar after I get through preaching, or you can come now. It doesn't matter to me. But we need to understand that our God knows what he's doing as the shepherd. The first sheepfold, of course, is the village sheepfold. They didn't have identification marks. They, they had a porter. They would come in at night. They'd put their sheep in. And then the next morning, the shepherd would come to the door, and the shepherd would tell the porter, and the porter would say, hey, I saw you last, yesterday afternoon before it got dark. Because see, the porter wanted to identify the shepherd. And so the shepherd would come to the door, and he, would, he wouldn't go inside the sheepfold. I mean, the sheepfold had several different flocks in it, several different shepherd's sheep were in it. But the shepherd would just stand at the door and make his call. Now, we read a minute ago that Jesus Christ knows us by our name. You say, what's our name? Well, it's whatever Jesus has named you. The truth is, everybody in this room, if you've had a dog or a cat, you have named them. Some of you are so impoverished, you named your goldfish. But if you have a pet, you name the pet. And so the, the shepherd would come to the door and he would shout the name of his sheep. He knew them all personally. He'd make his shepherd's call and they'd come running out and all the rest of the sheep just stayed in the pen. Only the sheep that knew the voice of their shepherd came running out. And only did those come running out when they heard the shepherd call their name. Amen. Amen. Now, I know many of you, you've had dogs in the past. You named your dog, right? Because you call your dog and the dog would answer and come. Now, if you had a cat, you named it, but he never comes or she never comes when you want it to because cats are a little bit more stubborn than dogs. Cats are wonderful. We got some cat lovers in this room. So I'm going to compromise just a little bit and say, praise be the Lord for kitty cats. <laughs> Amen. Now I feel better. I'm safe. At least for the moment. But you name, and sheep are like that, they became pets to the shepherd. And he would name those, those sheep and call them by name. And they would hear his voice and know his voice. Now here's what's beautiful. Now uh, China is the country that has the most sheep. They, they produce the most sheep. Second country to produce more, the next amount of sheep is India. The third most producing uh, 
country that produces sheep is Australia. I read or I heard somewhere where a shepherd stole somebody else's sheep. I guess he was a shepherd. He might not have been a shepherd, but he stole a whole flock of sheep. How big that flock was, I don't know, but true story. This man steals a flock of sheep, and the shepherd comes and takes the guy to court, the true shepherd, and says, I want my sheep back. Well, they, they talked about the evidence. They, they, were, they weren't tagged. They weren't branded. There was no way, really, that the shepherd could prove that the true shepherd could prove that they were here, his. The other guy says, they're mine, and the true shepherd said, no, no, they're mine, and the judge was just at odds. So what he did is he let the sheep in the courtroom. Now, not all of them, but he brought a lot of, a, a large percentage of the flock of sheep, literal sheep, in the courtroom. He said, I'll leave the doors open, and I want the man that says they're his sheep to go out. And I want him to go out in the back, out of sight, in the hallway, leave the doors open, and I want the man who says these sheep are his to call them. So the man went in the hallway, out of sight, and he said, here, sheepy, sheepy, sheepy. Hey, you dumb sheep, get out here. Get here now. Well, the sheep never said a word, but back, back. That's all they said. Because they left some deposits on the, ground, on the floor. And so the man got frustrated and angry and he went back into the courtroom and the judge said, now we want the one who says they're his sheep to go out into the, out of sight to the double doors and just, we want him to call his sheep. And so the shepherd goes out into the hallway and he begins to name them. Hey, whoa, woolly, tiny, fluffy, mutton. Betty Lou, Peggy Sue, Scotty, sorry, Scott, Maggie, Bobby, sorry, Bobby, Fluffy, Skipper, woo, come, come unto me. And every one of those sheep jumped up and ran out into the hall to their true shepherd. The judge said, that settles it. The sheep know their shepherd's voice. Case closed. And they put the other rascal in jail where he belonged, amen? There's nothing worse than a horse thief unless it's a sheep thief, amen? And so the sheep are called into the courtroom. What if I was to tell you that this whole world is a courtroom? We're all on trial and everybody's looking at us. And the only way out of our predicaments is to listen to the voice of the shepherd. To know what he calls us. To know he knows our name. I don't think it's literally the name we carry now. I believe God has pet names for us. And you kind of know what it is. Well, you'd have to know what it is to come running. And when the shepherd calls your name, you come running. Amen? I'm not going to tell you the name Judy calls me. But when she does, I come running. Oh, yeah. You say, why? Because I'm not a stupid sheep. <laughs> Hello. Now, the second sheepfold is when the shepherd goes out into the wilderness or outside the, the village, and he keeps the sheep overnight. Now, if the shepherd is going to keep the sheep overnight out in the country, he in the daytime builds a fortress. He builds usually something made out of thorns. He builds... Um, maybe rocks, different things, uh, uh, whatever he could find, thick brush, and he would build him a, 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 a fortress or kind of a fort. And he'd leave one entrance open, and that would be the entrance where the sheep would go through that door. And then the sheep would stay there during the night because in the city, the porter had the night shift, but in the country, the shepherd had the night shift. And so the shepherd would gather all the sheep inside this little fold that he made out in the country, and there he would protect his sheep. 
The story is told of a man who came and looked at a sheep herder and said, uh, and he saw the sheep fold and he said, where in the world is the door to this thing? And the shepherd said, I am the door. I lay across that opening every night. And if a wolf gets into my sheep, it's got to cross over me. And if my dumb sheep sneak out during the night, they've got to cross over me. And I want you to know if you walk out on Jesus Christ, you've got to walk over him. I want you to know if the devil's going to come and take your, and take your lunch, he's got to first walk over Jesus Christ. And we need to understand that safety is in the power of Jesus Christ. It's not in money. It's not in talents. It's not in ability. Safety is in the blood, the power, and the provision of Jesus Christ. Amen? And so the shepherd watches over the sheep all night long, and then they would go in and out and find green pastures because Jesus is the door of the sheep. And they go in and out and find green pastures. We read this in chapter 10. Now, it's a beautiful thing when we stop and look at how Jesus Christ provides for us. I want you to notice verse 10, John 10:10. 10, 10. The thief cometh not but for to steal, kill, and destroy, but I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Now, let me say right now, that verse isn't saying that you need more money. That verse isn't saying that you need more of what you already got. That verse is saying that if you're going to have abundant life, you need Jesus Christ. You need peace that only God can give you. You need safety that only God can provide. And you need everlasting life and the joy of the Lord flooding your soul. That's what you need. You don't need more of what you got. You need what Jesus has, amen? amen. That, that's good enough for an amen. amen. I know, I know it's hard sometimes to say amen because the one beside you is listening. But peace and safety and con contentment in Jesus Christ is far greater than what we think of getting more of what we already have because that, that um, uh, abundant life is not in things and not in money, it's in the purpose and the strength of Jesus Christ. Isn't that good? Now, in this little country sheepfold, I guarantee you the animals would try to come and take a sheep away. The sheep was not in danger as long as the sheep stayed where Jesus was. The sheep was not in danger as long as the sheep stayed in church, stayed in the Bible, stayed in the things of God. The sheep was not in danger as long as the sheep stayed next to Jesus Christ. Remember uh, in Luke chapter 15 that the, that the sheep was out in the wilderness and the good shepherd went and found the sheep and brought him home upon his shoulders because the sheep had been, went astray and was lost. Well, the sheep wasn't lost because he was in the wilderness because the other 99 sheep were in the wilderness already. The sheep was lost because it was without a shepherd. So I have this to say to each one of you in this room. You don't have to stay close to your preacher. I'd prefer you not to. You don't have to stay close to the people of the church. That's not really necessary. But you better stay close to the Lord Jesus Christ because he is your savior, not the pastor. He is your deliverer, not the church. He is your God, but we come to draw strength from each other in the house of the Lord. We call this a sheepfold. God calls us out. The Lord calls us out. He, he doesn't call us into the sheepfold. He calls us out of the sheepfold. So what does God call us out? Of the sheepfold, we could call this a sheepfold, couldn't we? But your sheep are in here, and Jesus Christ calls us out of the sheepfold. Well, why did he call us out? There's a lot of preaching about being called in. Listen to me. You don't have to call people into the sheepfold. If they're following Jesus Christ, they'll come on their own because they follow his voice, and a stranger they will not follow. But Jesus calls us out of the sheepfold so that we can do a few things. Number one, we can go out and eat, and I love going out to eat. Can I get an amen right there? I, you, you, you guys, you know, would you lay off the NyQuil before, before you come to church? Amen. 
You know, when you're called out of the sheepfold, and I'm convinced that most of you sheep today, when you get out of this sheepfold, you're going to go somewhere to eat. Hello? Am I? Yes, I am. Confession's good for the soul, hard on reputation, but I'm going. And so the shepherd calls us out, and he's not so much calling us in because that goes with being born again. But he calls us out to eat, to play, to enjoy, to spend time with our shepherd in the light, in the light. And he takes us outside the sheepfold, out into the wilderness or out into open space so that we can bat, bat to other people that need to be bat to. Amen? He takes us out so that we can witness and tell others about our shepherd. Go out and brag about our shepherd. He's awesome. Woo! He knows my name, and I know his voice. Woo! What a shepherd. He knows my name. He knows my voice. He cares about me. He's powerful, all powerful. He, not, he won't lose one of us. We're saved for everlasting life. We're redeemed forever. Jesus Christ, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I'm blessed. And in the court of witness, in the place of testimony, we tell others that our Savior, Jesus Christ, is supreme and no one can take us out of his hand. We are redeemed by the blood and the power of the Lamb of God who is our great shepherd, chief shepherd, shepherd of all of our souls. Amen. Amen. Woo, praise the Lord. I'm glad that I've been inspected by the porter. And the porter says, hey, he's one of the true shepherds. He's one, he belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ. He belongs to the true shepherd. And you know, when we're passed under the rod, maybe the rod of judgment, maybe the rod of sickness, maybe the rod of opposition, we'll always come out on the other side and people will say, hey, his shepherd, her shepherd is Jesus Christ. They've been through the door. They've been changed. And Jesus Christ is saving them and protecting them and taking them through life's journey. Amen? Now, I want to point out this because this is real important that you see um, the fact that we, we belong to Jesus Christ. Psalm 100 and verse 3, Psalm 100 verse 3 says, Know ye that the Lord, He is God. It is He that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are His people and the sheep of his pastor. Boy, that's a shouting verse. We belong to Jesus Christ. We have abundant life. We're blessed, and we're, we're more than conquerors in Jesus Christ. Not only is there the porter's inspection, but there is the voice code. The voice code. You know you have number codes? At my house, we have a number code. You push beep, 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 beep. And that number code tells whether I get into the house or not. And sometimes I don't pitch, you know, I don't push the right beep, beep, beep. Amen? I know you're trying to decipher what the beep, beep, beep is. I'm not telling you. But when I get to the house, I beep, 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 beep. And the sound of the beep, 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 beep tells whatever that mechanism is in the door. He's got the right voice. You've got the right beep, beep, beep. Amen. And the door whoosh, and you opened up and go in and you praise God. I'm not so seen now that I can't open my door. When I go vote, they say, what's your address? I said, don't worry. I know how to get home. Hello. I know how to get home. I thank God for the fact that God is so good. To, but there is the voice code. I want you to notice verse 4 and uh, verse 5, John chapter 10, verse 4 and verse 5. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know what? 
they know his voice. But a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. Now look at verse 27 and 28. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my Father's hand. We've got to put in the Father here. Verse 29, my Father, which gave them me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. Every time I read this verse, I have to grab a hold of that which gave them me. Jesus Christ said, my Father, which gave them me. Did you know I've been given to, the, to Jesus by the Father? If you're a born-again child of God, you've been given to Jesus by the Father. And the Father gave you to Jesus so that Jesus could wash your sins away, clean you up, give you eternal life, and preserve you and give you eternal life and get you home. Honestly, I mean, honestly, I don't know the way home from here to heaven. I mean, I know my way home. Three miles from here, I know my way home. I can make my way home. I don't have a problem finding my home here. But honestly, I don't know how to go to heaven as far as the geographical roads. I don't know which road you turn or which road you go. I just don't know. But I know that if I follow Jesus, he knows the way. He knows the way through the wilderness, and all we have to do is follow. I know that if we follow Jesus Christ, I love it when Thomas said, we don't know the way. John chapter 14. Thomas says, we don't know the way. We don't know what to do. And, and Jesus said, have I been so long with you that you're still so stupid? Basically what he said. He said, Thomas, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. There it is. The Father gave me to Jesus. Isn't that good? Come on. I love it. The voice code. I love the voice code. I'm glad that, that I know the voice of my Savior. I know that he is a good shepherd. And I'm thankful for the fact that my shepherd has saved my soul. My question to you today is, do you know the shepherd's voice? Do you know his voice? Now, I'm not saying, do you know your condemnation? Everybody knows that. And I'm feeling very guilty. Well, you ought to. If you need to be guilty, then you ought to feel guilty. If you've been in the, you know, you've been stepping in things you shouldn't step in, then you ought to feel bad because you smell bad. I had a guy tell me at Golden Crow, a preacher, he said, man, he said, can I come and visit your church? I said, you sure can. He said, I, I want to come because he said, I watch you on television. He says, you're mean. <laughs> I said, I'm not mean. He said, well, if I did that to my church, they wouldn't come back. And I said to the preacher, well, that's why we got to grow all the time. Hello? I am, um, I know the voice of Jesus. And if we listen to his voice and know, by the, by the way, the Bible says that we shall never perish if we listen to his voice, if we come to him. He knows us, he redeems us, he washes in his blood. He said he'd never leave us nor forsake us. He's the good shepherd that gave his life for the sheep. This good shepherd died for you and I. Jesus Christ died for us shed his blood on the cross of Calvary as the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary, gave his life for you and I. His blood washes our sins away. We're given eternal life. And Jesus was buried, rose again from the grave. He is alive. He went back to the Father. You say, why did Jesus Christ have to resurrect from the dead? He had to resurrect from the dead because he said he'd never leave us nor forsake us. And a dead Savior has forsaken us. But we don't have a dead Savior. We've got a resurrected Savior. I know you Bible theologians, you that read those commentaries, and most of them commentaries are common. 
commentary. They're just a commentary people. But you, you read your, you say, but Jesus did leave. Yeah, he went back to the Father. And he said to the Father, send them one just like me. Send them an invisible me. That's what the Holy Ghost is, an invisible Jesus. He is God. The Holy Ghost is God. And Jesus Christ went and sent. See, in that day, remember Jesus Christ said to his disciples, you shall receive the Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost is with you, but he shall be in you. So when Jesus Christ walked with Peter, James, and John and the apostles, Jesus Christ was with them. The Holy Ghost was with them. But when Jesus Christ went back after raising again from the dead, went to the Father, the Holy Ghost came down and went in them. Isn't that good? Yeah. Woo! I said, isn't that good? Yeah. Hallelujah. I'm going to keep asking questions if you don't respond better. So thankful for the Spirit of God. So thankful for the fact that He shall never leave us or, nor forsake us. God is with us through every trial in our life. Amen? That's beautiful. Yeah, well, preacher, I think you're bragging when you talk about Believe in God for healing. I think you're bragging when you talk about standing up for Jesus Christ in the darkest storms. Well, there was a man that said long ago, Dizzy Dean, his great quote was, it ain't bragging if you can do it. And greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Hello? So what I'm going to do tonight, today, tonight, what I'm going to do, I got up so early, I think it's night. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you an invitation to hear the voice of Jesus Christ. Now, I'm going to speak, but I want you to listen to the voice of Jesus Christ. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Do you hear that? Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me, for I'm meek and lowly at heart, and you shall find rest for your soul. Hear the voice of Jesus? Whosoever will, let him come. And the Bible says that whoever comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. You hear his voice? There's no sin, no storm, no bad thing that you've ever done that will separate you from the love and the activation of God's forgiveness. Do you hear his voice? Jesus Christ, do you hear his voice? Do you really hear his voice? Let's hear his voice in another way. Lazarus died, and the angels carried him to Abraham's bosom. But the rich man died, and in hell, he lifted up his eyes in fire. Crying and begging, he cried, Abraham, have mercy on me. And sent Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in these flames. That's still the voice of Jesus. That's still the voice of Jesus. Everyone in this room, including myself, everyone in this room, including myself, could drop dead before we walk out of here. Every one of us in this room might not even see tomorrow. In fact, this whole congregation may never see another day because none of us have a guarantee of another day. But Jesus Christ said, if you'll come to me, my sheep know my voice. Stranger, they won't follow if they'll come to me, I will give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Now, I posted this on Facebook, and it's something I've said over and over again. What is repentance? Repentance is a grieving away from your sin into the arms of Jesus Christ for a new life. That's what repentance is. God can't help you till you grieve away from your sins. God won't help you until you grieve away from your sins. 
But when you grieve away from your sins into the arms of Jesus Christ, not into the arms of a bottle, not into the arms of drugs and narcotics, you grieve away from your sins into the arms of Jesus Christ for a new life. God will give you a, an abundant life full of safety and peace and joy in the Spirit of God. Amen? So the shepherd comes to the sheepfold and says, Woo! Scotty! Come! Tiny! Come! Fluffy! Come! Bobby Lou, come. Billy Sue, come. Bobby Jack, come. Aaron, come. Pat, doesn't that sound like a sheep name? Patricia. <laughs> Patricia, come. Christopher, that sounds like a sheep name. Come. Tyler, come. Joel. That don't sound like a sheep name. That sounds like a prophet name. <laughs> Become. Whatever your name is, Jesus Christ is saying, come. Yeah. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. Now, we're going to invite you to come to an altar. Josh is going to come and play some music. And the first invitation I want to give this morning, it's still early. I know you're going to leave here and go eat, but it's still early. I know you're going in and out and find fine dining. I know you're going to do that. But I want you to know that the first invitation I want to give is to you that are lost, you've wandered from the shepherd, you've drifted away, you've fallen in sin, you're not where you ought to be, you're backslid. I want you to hear Jesus call your name. And I'd like for you to come to this altar and say, Jesus, here. Did you know years ago, the Baptists? Now, the Baptists are incredible people. Are you hearing me? You say, why are you saying that, preacher? Because we got some Baptists in this room. I'm not stupid. Baptists are incredible people. Years ago, Baptist, the Baptist church had roll call. I'm serious. They had roll call. How many remember that? Yeah. And they, they had the church register. Register. And the preacher or the secretary of the church would get up and call the name. Every Sunday morning, he'd call the name. If they had 90 in a, a members in the church, they'd call 90 names. If they had 15 members, 20 men, they'd call that, that many names. And when they called your name, they shouted, here, here, here. And then they didn't hear a here. If the one called your name didn't hear a here, the one reading the roster would say, go there and find out why they're not here. Pretty good, pretty good stuff, isn't it? I love that. Maybe we ought to start doing that. Yeah, I think everybody at Mrs. Church ought to owe me a steak dinner. And, and I'll keep the books. Amen. I want to invite you to come. And we're going to invite first those who need to get from the Lord. And then we're going to pray for those that are struggling. We're going to ask God to do something special. And we'll ask the Spirit of God to fall on Aaron and Lawrence. Holy Spirit, just fall on them. Just come to them and just abide with them, abode with them for their journey. We're going to pray with you guys in just a moment, but first stand with me. And we want to invite everyone in this room to hear the voice of Jesus Christ because you now are in the courtroom and your shepherd's calling your name. It's time for you to lift perk up your ears and make your way so that you can be identified with your shepherd. Would you do that? Altars open.
Come on. Hallelujah. We had a young man saved Sunday morning. Been seeing some people saved from time to time, but this would be a great day for you to make sure that you make that decision. To hear that voice. Hear that voice. God knows you by name. God knows you by name. You're important to Him. He has named you. Just like a shepherd would name their their sheep because they were so fond of them. God has named you. Are there others? Come on, are there others? Hallelujah. Are there others? Just as them sheep were brought into the courtroom and the good shepherd called them a name and they came running out. You need to come running to your shepherd, not your pastor, not to an altar per se, but you need to come running to the true shepherd because he knows your name and you know his voice. Would you hear him? Would you hear him? Do you hear him? pray. Come and pray. Come and pray. Praying for the blessing of the Lord. Amen. Come on. There's others that need to come. There's others. You don't have to listen to my voice. Listen to the voice in your heart. Listen to the voice that's down deep. And say, I will, I will hear. I will answer to the voice of my shepherd. I will hear the voice of my shepherd. Listen, it isn't more of what you got. It, it isn't that you need more of what you got. It isn't that you need riches. It is that you need the security that only Jesus Christ can bring. You need the peace. You need the contentment in Christ. You need that strength and that protection that only Jesus Christ can provide as your shepherd. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Are there others that would make their way? Others that would make their way say, I need, I need this shepherd. I need this Lord in my life. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. This is Brother Akins, and I have an exciting announcement to make. We are going to start a revival in Galena, Missouri. Actually, the Lord's going to start one on June the 4th on Sunday morning at 1030 and Sunday night at 6 o'clock. We'll continue through the week at 7 o'clock nightly for an old-fashioned revival. I want to introduce you to a good friend of mine who pastors in Galena, Missouri, Jimmy Harris. Thank you, Brother Akins. Yeah, we're going to be having this big to-do down at Galena First Baptist Church. Brother Akins is coming. We're going to have music. We're going to have testimonies. We're going to have preaching. We're going to have the exposition of the Word of God. It's going to be wonderful. And we're going to let the Holy Ghost guide these meetings. It's going to just be a great great time in the Lord. Amen. I look forward to being with you, Jimmy, and we want to invite everybody else to come and be with us. It's easy to find Galena, Missouri. It's small, but it's got a nice, beautiful church there on the square, and we want to invite you to come and be with us. Jimmy, we're excited about going there, excited about working with you in this meeting. Thank you, sir. I'm excited, too. Y'all come see us. God bless you guys. I will sing when I am weak. For the joy of the Lord is my strength And I will walk with you alone You are my ever-present and every time with me Amen I'll sing glory to your name You have overcome the grave There is no other name by which you must be saved and your name, Calcom, Calcom, who's you? Place 
Tough as gone It's where Jesus paid the sin there for us all Now I can sing Redemption song Blood is satisfied The wrath of God to me I sing glory to your name And you have Is where Jesus paid the sin debt for us all. Now I can sing redemption song. His blood is satisfied. If your heart is 
broken tonight I have a friend who can make it right And if you're feeling all alone There's someone you can call on He's the architect of the universe He made stars to light the night the mighty oceans are formed by him And he's the river that never will run dry He's the architect of the universe He made stars to light the night The mighty oceans were formed by him the river that never will run dry. Talking about Jesus. Run dry. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, God Almighty. If you missed any of today's broadcast, would like to watch it again, or maybe share it with your friends, you can do that easily by heading over to our YouTube channel. Simply go to www.youtube.com forward slash Ozark School Gospel Church. You'll find today's broadcast as well as many other great messages. While you're there, be sure to click that red subscribe button to stay up to date with all of our latest videos. It's totally free and a great way to stay connected with us.